How's it going, everybody? Got the Home Light XL 922 Super back on the bench. I want to show you guys kind of the trials and tribulations of porting these old saws. It's definitely a labor of love. I love doing it, but um, I, I've skipped over things on previous builds, and I, I really want to show you guys what you're dealing with. Um, I get emails all the time about you guys want to port Home Lights. I want you guys to port your own saws and I want you guys to have success. Um, this channel is always about and will continue to be is, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'll show you how I did it. There's no secrets on this channel. And uh, I, I want to show you guys what you're going to deal with if you want to port one of these. Um, this saw is in really nice shape. I haven't found anything broken, damaged, it, it looks good, everything came apart, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods on this saw. Um, the main thing with these old saws is they collect a lot of dirt, and when you start pulling them apart, you, you disturb that dirt, and it ends up in the saw, and to me, I can't, I can't let that dirt stay in there and do all the work I'm going to do and then just say, oh, it's good enough. Because what happens? You could lose bottom end bearings um, real quick because that dirt will work its way into the bearings. And, you know, think about it, friends. If I port this and say it's going to run at 13,000 RPM, a lot goes wrong at 13,000 RPM. So um, I want to show you guys this morning, uh, I've been cleaning up gasket surfaces um, those are particularly difficult on home lights, so I want to show you guys that and I want you guys to get a good inside look at this crankcase and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to clean it and show you guys what I'm going to do before I even start porting. Um, it's easy to get ahead of yourself and start porting, but to me, I would rather make everything 100%, go over and make sure all my parts are good. I would hate to do work to these cases if there's something wrong with them. Um, same thing with the cylinder. I'm really happy with the cylinder. It looks good, but, um, you know, we got to clean this thing. It is absolutely filthy. So not from a lack of maintenance. It's just filthy because of what it is. These old saws gather a lot of dirt. So I'm going to bring you guys in. I want to show you guys the inside of the crankcase and, uh, I can get you guys a better look at what I'm going to do to this crankcase. But let's, let's have a look at what's going on inside. Okay. So. You guys saw in the last video, I tore this thing down, okay, took the cylinder off. Now, I spent an hour this morning, if you guys are going to port home lights, be prepared. These surfaces here, the gaskets are always stuck, okay? And uh, so what I ended up doing is I took a knife blade, like an Olfa knife, and I started gently scraping away the gasket on this saw. The gaskets on these can be anywhere from 15 thou to 25 thou thick. They're usually kind of spongy, but they're usually stuck. Okay, so what you end up what you end up wanting to do is you got to prep all these surfaces so that when you go to put the saw back together, the cylinder actually seals right. And uh, if it doesn't seal, you're gonna end up with an air leak, and then you're starting from scratch again. So. Um, now the way I usually do it, I will scrape as much as it as I can away. You got to be really careful. These cases are soft, and that hard blade will actually put nicks and chips in it if you're not careful. So uh, take your time, even if it takes you a couple of evenings after work. Um, I got I got this piece of paper towel in there to protect the crank seal because I don't want to get any of this stuff in there. Okay, and then what I do, I'll take a kind of a worn out. Uh, scotch braid pad here and I'll set up my air so that it's at like 40 50 psi and I'll take this 90 degree um, die grinder and I will buff these up anywhere that I can get and just slowly do it and as you can see you won't damage the case okay um, this area in here was completely packed here so again before I even start doing any work to these cases I want to make sure that everything's you know same thing in here and then I made a scraper with a screwdriver this is actually a tool I use for pulling crank seals you guys can see that I'll make tools whenever I can ok 
Okay, and I went around, you gotta get all the material, and you can see there's still a little bit left. Okay, you gotta get all the material from around here. Then what I do is, and you guys can see there's a little bit there, I'll go in there with a piece of scotch bright. Okay, and I will just sit there and polish this surface. The, the idea is, if you leave this stuff on there and it's sticking up, when you go to crank the cylinder down, right, it could be it could be sitting up a little bit, and then you end up with you end up with a cylinder that leaks. So um, I don't want you guys to go down that path because that can be really you know that can that cannot be a fun experience, especially if it's one of your first builds. Now you have a saw that doesn't run. You're not sure if your porting did it. So um, the mechanic work is nine tenths of of an old build like this. These these do take a long time. Um, I could spend anywhere from, you know, a month to six months on a saw like this. And uh, it's quite the journey. I try and take a lot of video and pictures. And uh, it's fun though. I, I really enjoy it. When it's done, you know, some of these builds that I've done, like that 850 I just built, I spent a lot of time on that saw. But watching Buck and run it and enjoy it. That's what it's about for me. He wanted a he wanted a pretty warm 850, and I was able to deliver it. And the next 850 we do is going to be warmer though. That was a test run. Um, I'm always trying to up my game. I've never poured one of these friends. I have owned them. Uh, I own several of them, and uh, I don't know what this thing's going to be capable of. So we'll find out. Okay. So I'm just going to go in here with brake clean and and one of my scrub brushes, okay? I gotta clean this whole case up because it's just filthy. Now, I'm not too concerned with that. That's, you know, that's standard. That's standard cleaning and prepping. I'm sure you guys all, all do that if you work on saws. Okay, just wipe it down. Okay, in here was particularly bad. You guys can see it got hot and a lot of this stuff was cooked on here. You can get it off with your fingernail though, so. Now, I want to show you guys actually what I'm doing today because this is the part that was very concerning to me and I, I thought about it for a night. Because you don't want to disturb much on these old saws if you can get away with it, but I don't tend to get away with anything, so. Can you guys see inside this crankcase? Right there, okay? That's a serious problem. There's scale in here. Uh, this saw's probably been parked, and uh, you know, under a bench. It's from British Columbia, and any of you guys that know, British Columbia, uh, you know, on the island, they're basically living in a rainforest there, so it's very humid. Well, what's happened is, you see that under my nail? Let's see, I'll scrape a little more here. Let's see if we can... See that yellowy powdery stuff? Well, that's flaking off the cases in this saw. Now, the cases aren't ruined, but... What's going to happen when we run this saw, this stuff's going to come off of here. Okay, look, there's a piece right there. Okay, see that? What will happen to your saw friends and I, I'm showing you this kind of stuff because I think it's important I don't want you guys to go down the road of Thinking something's good and then blowing up a vintage saw because that sucks especially if it's something you've wanted for years Maybe you paid good money for it Okay, like look at all this stuff in here Okay now I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna attempt to do it with just a brass brush. I'm gonna go in here and and polish this um if this stuff comes off, it will blow the saw up. That's going to make like a really fine grit. And that will either take our cylinder out. If that gets... Because what will happen is it will come through the transfers on top of the piston. And then it's just... It's like a scouring pad in there. And or... I think your bearing sits right in here, friends. If this gets through here, that powder will turn into a paste. Almost like a lapping compound. And it'll end up in that bearing and next thing you know you got a bottom end failure now I want to talk about that because here's the thing friends if I put a hundred hours into this saw or however long I'm gonna be working on it and it fails I, right away I'm gonna think I turned it up too hot but maybe 
Maybe I didn't turn it up too hot. Maybe this powder took out the bearing. I'm not going to know that, friends, or I'm going to wonder. And I'm going to end up second-guessing myself because was it the powder that took the bearings out or did I overspeed the saw? Did I run too much horsepower through the, through the crank? You don't know. So th this video is just more about eliminate possible issues before they become an issue or you blow up your saw. Okay, so I'm going to go in here again with this and I'm going to see if I can get some of this stuff off. Okay, look at that. Look at all that stuff that's coming off of there. Okay, now again, I'm gonna take this rag out right now. I'm gonna put a smaller one in there. Okay, let's see what we can do. This is gonna make this saw 10 times nicer and I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, look at the difference. Oh, <laughs> that's what I didn't want to happen. Whatever. Little highlight reel blooper. I'll pack that in there again. Okay, take two, eh, friends? Okay, let's go on the top here. Get you guys right in there, okay? So look. Okay. I'm just going to put this right in. Okay, let's see what we got here. What a difference. See? It's it's the little it's the little odds and ends on these builds. Okay? Let's see if we can polish this section up. This brush is gonna make it through this, but it's worth it. I'll donate a brush to the cause. Okay, look at that, friends. Clean, shiny. Now, one more place I want to hit is in here. This carb area where the where the uh, reeds mount is just full of scale. Let's see. You guys see down in there? There you go. That's all scale. So I'm gonna go in here. I'll zoom you guys back. I'm gonna go in here with the brush and see if I can get some of the out. <laughs> On the sides. <laughs> I thought about how to do this and I figured this is the best way. I might do some porting in this intake, but nice thing is at least I'm getting all the scale off. Yeah, it's about a half an hour later. Did a little cleaning, polishing, shining. Used my blowgun. Okay, look at this crankcase inside now. That's a crankcase that you can be proud of. Uh, it looks like brand new. It's smooth. There's no crud in there. Now I don't have to worry about losing this saw. Um, I also went around here a little bit with that same brass brush. I got a little bit more discoloration here that's not actually gasket material, but I'll continue to go around there. 
I did the mating surface where the reed block sits. I did here where the handle bolts on. And then again, right inside. That was the scaliest part and uh, it's clean now. What was going to happen, what I was worried about is that stuff was actually going to get sent into the bottom end. So now I feel better. Okay, here's our finished cleaned up cases. I'm super happy. That went nice and easy. Didn't take very long, maybe 45 minutes. And uh, I'm happy. We got rid of all the scale and now I know that this saw should live. And that's what you gotta do if you're gonna build these vintage power saws. You gotta, you gotta really be diligent and uh, go through everything. I got respect for other guys that, that do this kind of work. Uh, it can be a labor of love. So, the next thing we're going to do here, friends, is in the next video, I'm going to start doing the port work. I'm still mapping this out. I see some serious deficiencies in these transfers, and uh, I think we can make them work quite a bit better. Now, um, in the next video, I'll show you guys kind of what I'm thinking, but again, this is going to save me a ton of time once I get this cylinder prepped because everything should seal up good and we don't have to worry about the bottom end failing so hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm trying to really break it down and show you guys what i'm doing uh that way it takes away the guesswork a lot of you guys are building saws and uh you know i get a lot of good questions and comments so the best way to answer a lot of these questions is just to do stuff like this on video I'm super happy. I can't wait to make this thing go fast. This is going to be a lot of fun. I bet you this thing's going to sound wicked when it's done. Um, we still got that pipe to finish. I got a little bit of welding to do on it. I think I'm going to do that today and get that knocked off. And then next time you see this saw, friends, we'll start doing the port work. Um, I'm still studying the cylinder. I, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do. And uh, just have to make up a plan and, and uh, execute it. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.